Okay, ready, go. <clears throat> um, hi. This is uh, Shannon Nicole Kringen in Seattle, Washington, United States of America on February 8th, 2021. And I'm somebody who is interested in communicating. And I've always wanted, since I was a little girl in San Diego, California, as a little three-year-old, I was neglected by my parents. And I love my parents and they're good people. Uh, but they had me when they were really young and they stayed together till I was four and they divorced. They really didn't fit together, which is unfortunate. Um, when you're the only child of parents who divorce and who are preoccupied with themselves for good reasons, uh, my mom and dad were each neglected by their parents. And so they had to figure out how to raise themselves and fend for themselves. And so I was neglected by my parents because they, they didn't know how to nurture me. <clears throat> As a little kid, I decided that I was a burden and I felt ashamed. And I felt like my job was to not need very much and not get in the way of my parents. And now as a 52 year old, I chose to not have children. I've never been married and I've never had kids. I'm an only child. I'm left-handed. I'm mostly an introvert. Uh, I do not conform to mainstream society. And I'm very natural. I love the smell of goats and the smell of horses and the smell of nature. And I feed my cat a raw meat diet nutritionally balanced for all life stages. So that's just a little bit of a gist of me. I'm feeling really angry and defensive and I put my guard up a lot. And in therapy today, I've been in and out of therapy for 30 years, which is kind of embarrassing, but I'm not saying that to put myself down. I'm saying that to acknowledge the reality that I still haven't my therapist today said it seems like I want to break free from the prison that I'm in psychologically, which is I feel guilty and ashamed that I was even born. And I'm afraid that I'm a narcissist at times. But they usually say if somebody thinks they might be a narcissist and they're disturbed by the idea, then they're pro so I'm probably not a narcissist because I feel ashamed of the possibility that I might be a little bit narcissistic, meaning a bit self centered in a way that is not real nice for other people to be around. And that actually might be a little bit of a case. But if I am, if I do have a self centered neurotic tendency, it's not because I think I'm better than other people. If anything, it's because I think I'm not as important as other people and I feel scared and like I don't feel safe. And my therapist today validated to me that it's very strong to be vulnerable. And I used to cry in therapy sessions and I haven't lately. And today I cried a little bit which actually was a good sign that I was letting my guard down more than I have been. Um, I saw my mom recently and some issues came up for me. And I know that my mom and I love each other. And I know that my dad and I love each other, but I have a tremendous amount of anger and shame and guilt when I think about each of my parents separately and I feel like I need to get away from worrying about their problems. I have my whole life, I've been worried about my mom and dad's problems. Like my dad had trouble with his love life and he was trying to figure out his career. My dad wrote comedy and music and he was insecure and had stage fright. And I wanted my dad to be successful as a comedian and or a folk singer. He did become a really good tennis teacher for a while. He almost competed in tennis, almost played Jimmy Connors in the 70s. And I would hear about my dad's love life problems as a kid. And my dad told me things about his love life issues that really you shouldn't tell your daughter because I, I had no capability of helping him in any way, shape, or form. And it freaked me out and made me concerned for what kind of woman am I going to grow up to be as an adult? 
because my dad told me, you know, the games that <clears throat> the games that men and women play with each other and that he felt rejected by women and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I don't want to go into it because um, I mean no disrespect to either one of my parents, but as me, a Shannon Kringen, as somebody, I'm trying to become an adult. I'm trying. I feel like I'm 52 and I never had kids. And so I don't know what it's like to be a parent. All I can do is try to parent myself. And all I can do is I'm really good to my cat and my houseplants, but I've never been a parent. Um, I love kids in terms of their creativity and playfulness, but I've never really wanted to be a parent. And I've never wanted to volunteer and help little kids because I'm not, I'm not good at being a disciplinarian or taking charge. I need to parent myself. So I'm tired of people putting guilt trips on me thinking I should um, volunteer and help kids and do all this other stuff that, you know, whatever. Um, here I go. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. My mom, I grew up knowing too much about her love life. So there's just certain things. I, my mom is a very private person, so I don't want to say a lot about each of my parents. My mom is a visual artist, and she used to be into Eastern philosophy, Advaita Vedanta, non-duality, all that kind of interesting uh, Upanishads, Hinduism, Eastern philosophy. She's not a religious person, but she's very spiritual and, and mostly into philosophy. Uh, she's very intellectually, you know, smart, <clears throat> but she's not particularly practical when it comes to financial matters and when it comes to her artwork and figuring out how to make money with it. Um, and she's had opportunities and turned them down, but that's really none of my business. Um, my business is to take care of myself. So I almost feel like I can almost imagine how the son or daughter of a very famous person might feel like you feel like you're consumed with the, it was like you're in the shadow of your parent who's famous. It's true that when you're a little kid, you think of your parents as famous. Like I thought of my parents, like as a three or four year old, like, like they were famous, like you know, when you're a little kid, your mom and dad are like, you know, the special <clears throat> humans. And, and I thought, I remember thinking of them like they knew everything, like that's my mom, that's my dad, they know everything, like, because they're protecting me. Uh, they're teaching me how to be in the world and they're protecting me and I live with them. I mean, I went back and forth between my mom and my dad. I, I mostly live with my mom and saw my dad on weekends back and forth and they were very different from each other. So it was very confusing going back and forth between my parents and they put me in the middle and I was the messenger and it was really stressful. And I felt like I didn't wanna betray my mom and I didn't wanna betray my dad. And so I tried to be friends with both of my parents. And so it's a whole long story. It's a whole ball of wax. And now during this current time we live in with the economic and medical takeover that we're going through and the different things that I, some things I agree with and some things I don't. This video is not about me saying controversial things about that. Let's just say I have my own secret thoughts about that that I won't mention here. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just trying to figure out how to heal and grow and be more of an adult. Yesterday, I went and visited my old high school, South Whidbey High School, uh, where I painted a mural, my high school art teacher commissioned me to, well, you know, for free to paint a mural at our high school. And I, I filmed it yesterday. I made a video. It's still there. <clears throat> I painted it in 1986. And it's kind of like an old fresco that's crumbled. You know, it's like <clears throat> most of the paint has chipped off. And it's interesting to see that it's still kind of there. I'm amazed nobody's painted over it. So I take that as a compliment that nobody's painted over it. I almost want to contact my South Woodby High School and say, hey, would you like me to, you know, paint over that? I'm the person who painted that in 1986 as a South Woodby High School student. But um, my high school art teacher, Rich Conover, who I think has retired, <clears throat> asked me to do that. <clears throat> I introduced him to the artist Hunderwasser. And my art teacher gave me an award in front of my entire high school thanking me for introducing him to the amazing artist Hunderwasser from Austria, who a lot of Americans don't know about, who my mom introduced me to um, as a kid. 
So I grew up with Hunderwasser prints on our wall. I mean, not prints, but like, you know, my mom bought a calendar and a book about Hunderwasser and stuck stuff on our wall that was, you know, copies of his work that were printed in magazines and um, a calendar. And I love his work and his work is a little bit like Gustav Klimt. So, but this video isn't about that. This video is about, <clears throat> I'm Shannon Kring. I need to drink some water. Where's my water? Here's my water. <clears throat> <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat. <clears throat> I tend to feel like I'm always sneaking around and rushing around. Um, for the last five years, I've been involved with a guy who in some ways is a nice person, um, but in some ways um, we're not compatible and yet we stay together because we have a romantic spark and I'm really grateful for that. But there's other parts of the relationship that I think are not healthy. And I'm trying to see the similarity between the way I am with my parents and the way I am with the person that I'm involved in with. Um, and it's like I'm childlike in a certain way and it's embarrassing. And I want to figure out if Shannon Kringen was to take really good care of herself and not in a narcissistic way, but in a truly loving way, like if you treat yourself the way you would treat a child that you care about, like a little three-year-old kid really needs adults to take good care of them because they're only three and they can't do everything by themselves. So if I learned to treat myself the way I would treat a three-year-old that I was trying to love and nurture and care for, like I was their parent, because I've never been a parent. I had an abortion in my 20s, and that's a whole nother long story, but I was so terrified to have a child in my 20s. The guy that I was going to have a child with was polyamorous, and he was a wild hippie, and we had no plan, and I was scared, so I decided I don't want to do this. He wanted me to have a kid with him, and I didn't want to, and he wanted to go live on a commune and have kids with other women, and the whole thing was just too wild for me. Even though I partly agree with the philosophy of being natural and being honest, and I think some people truly are polyamorous, can love more than one person. I'm not into the whole patriarchy, everybody has to get married and have kids and be traditional. I'm not into that at all. But I was too scared to be polyamorous with somebody. I didn't want to quit my job and give up my ability to make money because I'm very practical. And I grew up with a single mother who constantly needed husbands and boyfriends, or we were financially destitute. My dad always paid child support, but my mom always struggled financially. And my mom still struggles financially in her 70s, thankfully has a boyfriend. My mom's fourth husband died a few years ago. That's a long story. I'm just, I'm not saying this to put a spotlight on my mom. I'm just saying that I grew up with role models that weren't the best in terms of marriage or family or stable life. And I have to figure out now as a 52 year old, I live by myself in an apartment with my cat and my house plants. I know how to pay all my bills. <clears throat> I'm going to food banks and getting extra free food every week uh, to cut down on my expenses. And then I buy really ex fancy organic food at the store, I can afford to do that <clears throat> because I receive, <clears throat> excuse me, as much free food as I can from the food banks. And I also share it with several friends and family and some family members. Well, mostly my mom um, and a few other friends. And so I do share the food I get. And then there's two pantries down the road for me that I donate food to. So I'm actually sharing food with other people, not just getting it for myself. But I, I also put a lot of effort into standing in line at these different food banks. And I feel safe doing so as well. So I do that um, and I'm getting food and I'm that's how, partly how I'm taking care of myself. I have a very inexpensive lifestyle, um, but I grew up with a mom who got married four times and my mom currently is having financial problems and it's stressing me out. Uh, my dad is doing fine. He's retired, lives in Florida. And he is a personal fitness trainer because he got bored with retirement. And so he volunteers at the pet shelter and he's a personal fitness trainer. My dad is 78 years old and he's literally as fit as Mick Jagger. And I'm not exaggerating. He's very lean and strong and fit. And <clears throat> you would never think he was 78 years old because he's so lean and muscular. 
um, I guess his face looks like he's an older person, but he's so fit and healthy and cardiovascularly, you know, he's very active and exercises every day and has two cats and eats healthy. Um, and my mom is also aging pretty well, but I don't want to invade the privacy of both my parents, but let's just say that I'm still trying to figure out how to break free from the prison that I'm in of being a neglected only child. And people sometimes have accused me of being an attention whore and being a narcissist. And that's really painful to me. So I just wanted to document how I feel today. Um, February 8th, 2021, I'm here in Seattle and I'm probably going to go for a nature walk soon. And I, I hope that I can figure out how to, because I know there's something I'm doing with the guy that I'm dating that is similar to how I acted as a child. And I feel like to be loved and accepted as my true self is not really possible with my mom or my dad and the current person I'm dating. He and I really do not see eye to eye. We have very different worldviews and very different. We were raised. He was raised in a military family and I was not. He was raised by mainstream conventional people and he has two siblings I'm an only child and I was raised by two very creative, eccentric parents who are a little bit mainstream, but mostly alternative. And yet the older my parents get, the more conservative they seem to become. So I feel like I'm on a very different wavelength now from both my parents, especially in the current medical and financial situation we're in. I, I see things very differently from each of my parents and although both my parents agree that nutrition is very important to your health, we agree on that. But we don't agree on some of the other things happening, uh, but on how to be healthy. Uh, but I won't get into that. But I'll just say that it's very lonely and alienating and invalidating to be me right now. So I have to figure out how to support myself and validate myself. And I have a few friends that I talk to that agree with me on, on certain things. And it's very, it's, I less, I'm, I feel less lonely when I talk to those friends, but I feel alienated around a lot of people right now. And so I have to find my own inner strength. And my therapist informed me that he only has, we only have about 10 more sessions and then he's going to graduate to something else. So I can only work with him for maybe 10 more sessions. And we're just starting to build trust with each other so he's going to help me transition to whoever the next therapist will be for me. If I even need therapy after 10 more sessions, I probably will. But um, I'm still trying to figure out how to be an adult in my love life. My career is a lot better than my personal life. I have some friends. I'm trying to build friendships with people. I'm kind of a loner. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what that is. I like a lot of time to myself. And the person that I'm dating that I've been dating for five or six years, maybe it's been six years. I don't know. The years are flying by, but it's been five or six years. <clears throat> we mostly have a sexual chemistry and a sexual spark. And um, we like to eat food and watch shows and then get X-rated with each other. And that's mostly what we're good at doing. Um, we used to go for nature walks, but we've had some really, really awful arguments lately. And because we disagree so much on the current reality that we live in, and we see it in a very different way. So I'm feeling the need to step back and take time for myself and try to reevaluate who do I want to hang out with and see if I can hang out with this person in a way that's fun for both of us um, or not and figure out how to honor myself and, and try to let go of the guilt and the shame that I was even born. I feel guilty and ashamed that I was even born. And I feel like part of my job is to help my parents fix their problems. And that's a burden and I'm tired of it. Uh, I want to focus on myself and know that that's not narcissism, that it, to, to take good care of myself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, to do my artwork, to do my best because I'm kind of half ass a lot of things. Um, I feel like I'm, I witnessed each of my parents being perfectionists, my dad with his comedy and music, my mom with her visual art. And I feel like both of them are kind of really critical and perfectionistic. 
And if you're a perfectionist, it'll prevent you from making creative things and putting them out into the world. And so I saw that and I didn't like it. So I went the other way. <laughs> I went maybe, I, I think some of my artwork is really good, um, but some of it I just kind of throw together really quickly and just throw it out there. And so it's not really my best, some of it. Uh, I've written some poetry and taken some great photos. I've written some good poems, I think, and I've taken some really good photos and I've done some really good abstract paintings, but I've also done sort of sloppy rough draft stuff and just thrown it out there into the world. And I do my radio show every week and my videos like this when I feel like it. Um, and I kind of just, you know, I feel like it's better to do artwork that do your best and then put it out there. But maybe I've gotten, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'm the opposite of a perfectionist. Maybe I'm a little bit not picky enough. Like I'm a little bit like, ah, eh, good enough. I'm stressed out. This is good enough. Um, so I'm glad that I make art and I put it out into the world, but I hope I can learn to slow down a little and edit and do my best and create and then edit out what isn't my best and only share with people what my best work is or what I really believe in. Um, but then again, I don't mind showing people my rough draft. I could say, this is a rough draft. This is not my best work. This is something I worked on. And then here's my best work. I don't know, something like that. But I want to be honest. I, I've always wanted, ever since I was a little girl, to be honest and authentic with people and to have real connections with people. So thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kringen in Seattle. I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, my website is shannonkringen.com. I have a Patreon you can support me on, patreon.com slash goddesskring for as little as a dollar a month. But uh, mostly I just do my art for free and I still work as an art and medical model, mostly online. So I am still working. Um, thankfully, my jobs have transitioned to being online. And I have a very inexpensive lifestyle. So I'm actually doing fine so far. Uh, I'm very smart and think ahead. And I've always lived in a very inexpensive way um, because I'm very cautious about the future. And I'm very like careful and I don't waste money on silly things that I don't need. I'm very cautious and careful about what I spend my money on and what I don't. And I'm really health conscious and I'm not on any medications and I rarely need to see a doctor. And my cat is not on any medications and he rarely needs to see the vet. And yet he's mildly diabetic and he's on a raw meat diet <clears throat> and he's doing well. And he's 15 or 16 years old at this point. So he's getting up there in age. Uh, he's a great cat. So he's actually sitting right next to me right now. I will turn the camera for a second. There's my cat sitting there in his little fresh air area and I take him for walks every day. So this is Shannon Kringen signing off for today. My main website is shannonkringen.com and a bunch of my creative stuff is linked. You can publish my photos for free on Flickr under the Creative Commons license. And my photos have been published all over the world. Uh, I don't get paid for that, that's free, but I'm happy because there's tons of free photos on the internet. And the fact that people publish my photos is a real compliment to me and how good my photos are and how interesting my photos are, that they're useful to other people. And they give me credit. So my name gets out there. So I'm really proud of that and happy about that for people who put me down, who I don't, because I don't copyright all my work. Well, I think it's a smart strategy because I get free advertising for my art and my photography by offering it free under creative Commons. I'm just telling you my philosophy about that. So you can go to my Flickr. There's over 5,000 photos you can publish for free. And sorry if I sound angry. I feel defensive. Uh, I have valid reasons for every opinion that I have. So, And so do you, I'm sure. You have your valid reasons for feeling the way you feel. So this is Shannon Kringen. My website, shannonkringen.com. Um, I do visual art. I model for other artists. I'm all over social media. And I think I'm going to put this on Rumble, BitChute, YouTube and Facebook. Um, so thanks for being here with me. ShannonKringen.com is my main website. Um, I'm a free range human being. I'm a free thinker and uh, um, good luck everyone. Be yourself no matter what they say. That's part of a lyric in a sting song I love called Englishmen in New York. Also inspired by Tom Petty and Tori Amos, their lyrics. 
Um, and Edie Brickell, I love Edie Brickell. Uh, new music coming out for her, Edie Brickell and New Bohemians. That's, that's some of the music that I love. I also love Neil Young and Bob Dylan and Beck and Jacob Dylan and um, folk rock bluesy jazzy rock and roll those are some of my favorite kinds of music um i love bits and pieces of classical i love pipe organ and didgeridoo and lots of different music but i guess folky rock and roll like tom petty and neil young and bob dylan and tori amos and beck are some of my favorite musicians i enjoy fiona apple as well i enjoy imogen heap i enjoy pj harvey i enjoy bjork I enjoy Laurie Anderson, uh, Jesse Sykes, Rafe Perlman, Jason Webley, to name a few. A lot of music. Uh, Patti Smith, Lou Reed, all those wonderful people. Um, uh, Miles Davis, Jimi Hendrix, Chuck Berry, you know, lots of different artists. Um, um, okay, thanks for listening. Um, this is Shannon Kringen, so signing off for now. I guess that's all for now because this video is getting long. I'll do another video soon. Bye for now.